The secret of a good low-cost flight is one where you get more than just good value for money. It's one for which you feel that despite the shortfall in price, there has been no fatal compromise. Thankfully, in the case of Jet2.com and their Boeing 757-200 aircraft, this is most certainly the case. For an airline which prides itself on being cheap and cheerful, there is most certainly a lot to like here. So let's go on a wee flight down to the Canaries, sample the food, review the cabin, and enjoy one of Europe's finest low-cost, mid-haul and high-value sectors. My name is Craig, I am Cessna Brun, and this is Flight Focus. For a Jet2.com flight from Manchester, your experience will generally start off in MAG's flagship Terminal 2. There are a few exceptions to this, so make sure to check before you arrive, else you might end up enjoying the consistently non-functional travelators of the MAN Skybridge. Anyhow, once you've dropped off your bags, which, by the way, have a massive 23 kilo allowance as standard, you can head through security to the new T2 airside. This terminal is, in my opinion, one of the best in the UK, if not Europe. I've covered a lot of my thoughts on the AP or in our 2 Airways 737-800 review late last year, but to reiterate, I do believe that the pax that it provides is simply top-notch. Today, however, we'll be putting on our archaeologist gear and heading back in time to the old Terminal 2. There's nothing quite as eerie as an old abandoned airport terminal. And that's exactly what happened to the old Manchester Terminal 2. Once upon a time, this, would have, this was throughout all my childhood where you used to come and board you, your flight on holiday, but now... No, the old terminal's walled off and all that's left are these gates. That'll be my aircraft later today, but my goodness, this place is dead. You could hear a pin drop. Thankfully, however, once the gate was published, it became a lot less haunted house, and not long after came the call for boarding group C. Then we hit a snag. See, while the French may have very good provision when it comes to baguettes, their air traffic controllers are not in such large supply. On this particular day, they had gone on strike, and no, that's not an April Fool. So soon came the call that myself, among surprisingly few others, had been expecting. The bad news this afternoon is that we're going to be delayed by at least two hours. Of course, the situation may change, and for this reason, we'll be taxiing across to a remote stand from which we have much easier access to the runway if it does so. And began the longest of waits. For being 757, you'd be surprised at just how long it felt, but for those of us on board, among the strong smell of nausea that comes as typical from a 35-year-old aircraft, to be fair to her, though, she's in pretty good shape, and you can't really tell. Well, mostly. See, there's at least one major problem with this particular aircraft type. For an aircraft with a capacity of over 250, there are only five toilets fitted on board, and being an arrow body, there is no easy place to stand out of the way. This results in the most English of events, the long and orderly queue. For the hour and a half that we sat on stand, there was not a single moment that any lav was empty, and even once we were in the cruise, not a single one was ever vacant. Something to bear in mind. With respect to the cabin more generally, the seats. Jet 2's seats are famously produced by Acro, and while these are actually pretty good, it could be said that after a couple of hours, you do begin to feel a bit numb. In addition, the tray table that are both smaller and less flexible than the alternatives, and the lighting, let's just say it's not reliable. However, it's worth it, all of that, for just the cup holder. This small, curved metal rod is alone one of, if not the best features available in any short or mid-haul cabin. Say goodbye to your cup landing on the ground during turbulence, and not having space for your laptop when you have a drink. It's like having an extension. Innovation. Incredible, especially for an Ulca. By the way, speaking of Vulcas, if you're getting bored of them, and charters, don't worry, we have a review for every single month of the year covering flag carriers as well as our old hat ultra low costs and some special charter flights, so please make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss a single one of them. Back to flying pencils on the cheap. So being an evening flight, LS771, Jet2.com offer a full meal, snack, drinks and duty free service. I decided, seeing I've not flown with them in a good few years, to give the food a go. So I pre-ordered my meal on the app for £11 and for doing so got a free starter, pudding and hot drink along with it. A free course meal is basically unheard of in the intra EMEA market, so it's definitely notable. Given the price though, it needed to be. For my main, I ordered the Penny Bolognese, which is a meaty option exclusive to pre-order customers. It was pretty solid, but for £11, even with the crackers, spreadable cheese and the chocolate mousse, it was definitely lacking on portion. There's only 300 calories in it, and that is a surefire disappointment. 
The crackers were pretty nice though, as was the mousse, and the deal also includes a free hot drink or water. I took the Yorkshire tea, uh, welcome to Leeds, and extra milk. Quality. And so, as quick as we were getting up into cruise in the first place, we began our descent into Tenerife South. I'd like to just pause for a moment because up until this point, all the script has been written on board the aircraft, and unfortunately, shortly after this, things began to change. The thing about Canaries narrow body flights is that to get there, your flight must pass two key places. First of the Bay of Biscay. Now, as any seafarer, including Charlie, will most probably tell you, this part of the sea is really very choppy, and that turbulence is also found up at flight level 380. It can be a bit rocky up there, and by rocky, I mean enough to shake the tea out of your Chanex supported cup. The only place that it got worse was on the approach. Now, I appreciate the footage here is not ideal because of the dark, but this was my 56th flight and the 100 odd count from my older travel companions, but never, never have we had a more unstable approach than this. The irony, of course, is that it was also our smoothest 75 landing ever, so there you go. Here's a comparison to a Thompson aircraft uh, in the same airport back in April 2017, and as you can see, there is quite a difference. On the whole, though, this flight was more than acceptable for a mid-haul European sector. In fact, at an average cost of £109 per person per way, that's only 6 pence per mile, it is on the low end cost-wise too. And so, to my great surprise, I'm going to be doing more than just giving this airline a good score and leaving it there. I'm going to be amending the scores that I've previously designated to other European airlines. They will all lose 0.5 wings, as Jet2.com gains 4.4 and takes the crown as number one European airline. For now. Well everyone, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, I'd recommend you go out and check out my other series, Resort Roundup. It's all about hotels and resorts across Europe and around the world, and I think you'll really like it. If you have already seen it, maybe just give it a wee another rewatch, and it helps me out a lot. But for now, I've been Craig, I am Cessna Brune, and I'll see you at Paris or Lee soon.